Hello everyone, welcome to Microbio Solutions. Today we are going to discuss on introduction to staining. First, we will see what are the uses of staining that is used in microbiology laboratories. So staining improves the visibility by greater contrast between the organism and the background which basically help us in differentiating the organism against the background based on the various morphological types and the morphology includes shape, size and arrangement of the bacteria. Staining also help us in determining the characteristics of the organism at times which will also help us in direct diagnosis of the disease and de demonstrate the purity of the culture. So staining itself can directly cross check with the clinical conditions of the patient and you can give the direct aid in diagnosing a disease and which will also help to observe certain structures present in the bacteria includes flagella, capsules and endospores etc. Why we should stain the bacteria? So this is a question that is arising in everyone's mind those who are into microbiology for the first time. What is the need of staining or why do we have to do the staining of bacteria? It is because bacteria have nearly the same refractive index as of water. Therefore, when we are looking for the bacteria under a normal microscope, they will see as opaque or nearly invisible to the naked eye. So we use different types of staining methods to make the cells and the internal structures of the bacteria more visible under the light microscope. So staining will help us in seeing the cells and internal structures more visible with the aid of a light microscope. And the microscopes are of little use unless the specimens for viewing the specimen are prepared properly. So we have to prepare the specimens for staining properly otherwise we will not be getting a good or quality microscopic pictures. And microorganisms must be fixed and stained to increase the visibility and accentuate specific morphological features also to preserve them for future use. If you want to cross check for something and you need to preserve it for future, you must fix the smear, stain it properly. And what is the difference between a stain and a dye? We often hear these two terms dye and a stain. So a dye is a general purpose coloring agent and a stain which is a terminology used for coloring a biological material. So a dye which is a general coloring agent wherein the terminology stain is used for coloring the biological material. So a stain is an organic compound which contains a benzene ring plus a chromophore and an oxochrome group wherein a chromophore is a chemical group as the name suggests chromo which imparts color to the benzene ring and the next compound is, a, is an oxochrome which is a chemical compound that conveys the property of ionization of the chromogen that is ability of the chromogen to form the salt and which will help it to bind to the fibers or tissues of the microorganism. These are the uses of chromophore and an oxochrome group along with the benzene ring in a stain. And bacteria are slightly negatively charged at a pH of 7. Thus, we use basic dyes to stain the bacteria. And if we are using any acidic dyes, 
which will not stain the bacteria but it stains the background at pH 7. And staining is an auxiliary technique used in microscopy to enhance the contrast in the microscopic image. And stains and dyes which are frequently used in biology and medicine to highlight the structures in biological tissues for viewing often with the aid of different microscope. We have different microscopes available in the laboratory. So this stain, impartment of this stain in the biology and the medicine which will help us in highlighting the structures of biological tissues. And there are different types of staining techniques available or used in microbiology includes simple staining where we use a single stain and differential staining where we use two or more stains. Simple staining is further divided into direct staining and indirect staining. Direct staining also called as positive stain where we use a basic dye to stain the bacteria and in an indirect stain we use an acidic dye which will stain the background of the bacteria or it is also called as a negative stain. Based on the requirement differential staining is divided into two groups that is separation into two groups and visualization of structures. In separation into two groups we have two examples that is gram stain and acid first stain. Here if you want to separate a group of bacterium into two groups, two subgroups, we call it as a separation into two groups of differential stain. In gram staining, we subdivide it into gram positive and gram negative bacteria and in acid first staining, we subdivide it into a acid first bacilli or non-acid first bacilli. And another type of differential staining is to visualize the structures of bacteria and the examples for those includes flagella stain, capsule stain and spore stain. Flagella, capsule and endospores are different structures attached to the bacteria. So if you want to study on these structures, we can make use of it differential staining for this particular structure. The next is a smear fixation. Before staining the smear or before we are going to stain a smear, we should find that whether the smear is prepared properly, whether the smear has fixed properly because fixation accomplishes three things mainly. First, it will kill the organism so that the person who is handling the smear will be safe from getting infected from that microorganism. Fixation kills the organism and next it causes the organism to adhere to the slide. So when you are using your staining reagents or when you are using the washing step, the organism will not wash off from the slide as it is adhered to the slide because of fixation. And it alters the organism structure so that they are more readily to accept the stain. These are the three uses of fixation or fixing of smear before staining. And basic requirements for staining includes first we need to have a stain and majority of the stains used for staining the bacteria are of basic types such as the nucleic acid of the bacterial cell attracts the positive ions. So we use basic dyes mainly to stain the bacteria. Examples of basic dyes includes methylene blue and crystal violet. We can also use acidic dyes in staining but not for the bacterial staining which can be used for staining the background. 
so that the background will be stained and the bacteria will be opaque. This type of staining is called as negative staining. And next component is the usage of a modern. Modern is a chemical that forms an insoluble compound or insoluble complex with the stain and it fixes it or causes the stain to penetrate more deeply into the cell. Modern acts with the primary stain and which will form a complex, dimodern complex and this complex will penetrate more deeply into the cell. Example for modern includes Gram's iodine used in gram staining and phenol used in Zeal Nielsen staining or acid fast staining. And next is an accentuator which is a chemical when added to a stain to make the reaction more selective and intense. So if an accentuator is added to the stain which will make the reaction more selective and intense. And the example for accentuator is a potassium hydrox when it is added in lawless methylene blue. And the last one is a decolorizer which is a chemical used to remove the excess stain in indirect regressive stain. So if you want to dis so if you want to remove the excess stain in an indirect regressive staining you can use a decolorizer also it is commonly used in other staining example ethanol in gram stain and we will see the general techniques used in staining as you all know the first thing is a proper smear preparation and once you are preparing the smear you have to air dry the smear and once it is dried heat fix the smear so that it accomplishes three things that it kills the microorganism which will help the organism to adhere to the slide also it alters the morphology of the cellular structure of the bacterium so that the dye will penetrate deeply into the cell wall of the bacteria. Next is to stain after heat fix stain the smear for a required period based on the procedure of the staining technique. Once the staining is over dry the smear and observe the smear under microscope preferably under oil immersion objective with the help of a cedar wood oil and you can visualize the bacteria with a contrast background if you are using a basic dye in staining. This is about today's class and if you have any doubts please feel free to post your comments in the comment section and do like share and support to our channel thanks for listening